I'm Dr. Esther Sternberg, and I'm author of the book Healing Spaces, The Science of Place and Well-Being. I do medical research on the science of the mind-body connection and how place and space around you affects your health. Well, the physical environment impacts our well-being in many, many different ways, ways that we are conscious of and ways that we are not conscious of subjectively. Everything that we take in through our different senses can change memories, that can change uh, moods, emotions, that in turn can affect health. So, uh, for example, when you look at a beautiful view, it turns out that there's a beautiful view spot in the brain. The brain is not just a, a bowl of mush. Uh, there are different spots in the brain that are important in recognizing different kinds of things. So there's a place in the brain that recognizes faces. There's a place in the brain that recognizes um, things, animals, uh, buildings, surprisingly. Uh, there's also a place in the brain that recognizes beautiful views. And work by Irving Biederman at the University of Southern California has shown that that spot in the brain is also very rich in opioid receptors, so those molecules of anti-pain molecules, the endorphins. And so the theory goes, and it's not been proven, but it's a very uh, attractive theory, that maybe the reason we all love to look at a beautiful view is because uh, when we look at a beautiful view, we get a rush of endorphins. Um, so that, to me, was, was an attractive uh, uh, kind of hypothesis and, and uh, discovery that can help us understand why it is that we all, across cultures, love to look at beautiful views and feel peaceful when we do so. I think a lot of times people rush through their daily lives, and I was certainly... Uh, guilty of this myself. You're so focused on what you need to do and the time and you have to get here and there and do your work and take care of your family and uh, you know, do all those things that, that, that are stressful really, uh, that we don't pay attention to the place and space around us. And, and if we do, if we start paying more attention to the bird song and the rustle of leaves, or I remember walking into work one day and noticing for the first time the very young leaves on sort of very uh, young trees that had been planted in pots on the plaza and, and noticing that they had a different sound than the rustle of those leaves had uh, in the fall when it was a crinklier sound than in the spring when it was softer. And just being aware of those kinds of things can put you more in touch with your environment and is really a way of getting into that mindfulness state we call mindfulness meditation um, that we know from studies on meditation on brain imaging and heart rate variability and um, all sorts of measures changes that mental state from a stress state to a relaxed state and helps improve mood and helps imp improve health. So I became much more aware of these things and I therefore consciously put features into my own environment at my home to enhance what I could tell, what I could feel uh, was putting me in a more positive mood. So for example, I, I have a pot of, uh, with um, a jasmine tree and another potted plant of a, of a gardenia bush on my, on my deck. And um, you know, I'm not a big gardener. It doesn't take that much to take care of these plants, but I can sit there in the evening on a summer evening and close my eyes and inhale the scent of the jasmine and the gardenia and it reminds me of being in Crete in the Mediterranean and, and you know happy very relaxed holiday time with friends and, and uh, family and, and so you can do those kinds of things in your environment when you pay attention to it in yourself what is it that makes you feel more at peace You can do things for your loved one to bring a little bit of the green into the hospital room. Um, if the patient, if it, for health reasons, you can't bring an actual live plant into the room, you can have pictures or, or images on the wall of, um, of uh, green spaces of beautiful views. There's a project that's being uh, run out of Dublin, Ireland by Professor Sean McCann. He calls it the Open Window Project, where 
uh, he uses webcams and LCD projectors to bring the beautiful views into the hospital. Certainly here at the University of Minnesota Center for Spirituality and Healing, they have wonderful uh, programs of using apps on, uh, on smartphones to uh, look at beautiful views of nature and have it uh, coordinated with music and sound. And, and I think those kinds of things are very exciting um, to really help to bring nature in when the patient can't go out to nature or when the, the view out the window is not so, uh, so beautiful. Mind-body research is really very exciting today. It, 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 there's an exponential amount of exciting, rigorous scientific research that proves the many, many connections between the brain and the immune system, uh, ways in which the central nervous system sends signals to the immune system, ways in which the immune system sends signals to the nervous central nervous system that enhance health if they're intact or can cause disease if they're not intact. So there's a tremendous amount of work showing how stress can make you sick, how believing or these salubrious activities can help make you well. What's really exciting is now we're at the forefront of being able to integrate these mind-body principles that we have uh, proven mechanistic mechanistically in using scientific research, we can integrate this and now apply it to patient care, to prevention, bringing out into the community to provide environments that are more healthful, that facilitate people walking or biking to work, that uh, have more green spaces, more contemplative spaces, um, bringing it into the larger world, uh, and, and really to, to have a integrative teams of experts who are the researchers who try to understand through research how these interventions, mind-body interventions work, teaming up with the architects, designers, landscape architects to implement these principles into the design of not only hospitals but schools, office spaces, buildings of all sorts. Um, and into urban design, landscape design. The American Institute of Architects is, has launched a, a very exciting um, initiative this past year called the Design and Health Initiative. The goal is to bring these principles of health and people's health uh, at the front and center of all architectural uh, design and urban design. So it's really a very exciting era when we can merge what we're doing in science and merge it into uh, what is being done by the design professionals to really help prevent illness, help people heal, help people be more productive, have a healthier um, uh, space to live in, uh, more community space, and, and really to, um, to prevent disease. There's no question that uh, having these technologies at our fingertips, having the research data at our fingertips, working together with uh, designers, architects, uh, landscape designers, really can help us all take charge of our health. Mm -hmm.